Good morning, everybody. Danny and Wanda back from Pecan Grove on the second video we talked about prior to the first one. We wanted to show you a little bit about, and the cicadas is about to bust my eardrums. Uh, a lot of the pecan trees we have on the property here, the reason we called it Pecan Grove, when we first began to clear out the property, we noticed right here we have one really big pecan tree here. The last year we had a lot of pecans on it, but I didn't realize it until 62 squirrels later. <laughs> They ate all the pecans just about. I didn't even realize that they were getting ready and had no clue they was even here. And uh, we did eventually eradicate most of the squirrels. And this year, it is loaded to the hilt with pecans. So we're hoping that we're going to get some kind of a harvest off of this big, giant, magnificent tree right here. But now, we, we knew the tree was there. We could see it, but it was covered with wisteria. I mean, we're talking roots and vines this big around. Had to take a chainsaw. Yeah, you had to go back and watch the videos yes. uh, of original where we were taking down giant wisteria. Lots of people were saying, no, 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 no. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a piece there, 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 I mean, there, it's, there, it's, there, 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 there. That whole fence line is nothing but wisteria. Yeah, and that's a neighbor's property on the other side. What they do is fine, but we're going to keep our side taken care of. You know? So this tree... And, it, and go show how big it is. Guys, you don't realize how big this tree is. So I can up here. I can't even, I can't reach around it. My hands are like way apart on the back side back here. This is a really big pecan tree. As a matter of fact, when I first came over this property 30 something years ago, uh, this pecan tree was here then. I remember it being here. They were, but it was not very big. It wasn't very big, but there was a bunch of sheds and a line right here behind it. So that's how much things have changed over the years. Now, this tree has so many pecans, and these are small pecans. These are the little ones, and it's very difficult to see them. Uh, I don't know if any of the lower limbs actually have any up under here or not, but I know up in the top part, I was using uh, binoculars looking up, and they are loaded up in the higher limbs up there. It was very difficult to see them. But last year we got enough to know they taste fantastic. Oh, the taste was phenomenal. Phenomenal. But let's go out and look at what we had a dozer do and show you the results of having a dozer come to clear some property. Now, guys, you... You have to go back and look at the prior videos when we first put them up. But from this point that I'm standing right here, the elderly gentleman had cleared up a lot up to this point by hand. But from here back, you couldn't get through it. I mean, it was just... There was paths. Yeah, he just had places underneath there he could run a lawnmower around through it to mow. And I had forgotten that this pecan orchard was even in here. And when I came in with my tractor to begin cleaning up some of the underbrush, I realized these pecan trees were here, so I went through it and tied a ribbon around all the pecan trees that was in here. And I was like, now I remember this orchard being here. So we did not have the money at the time to have a dozer come in. So this past spring, I had a dozer come in here, and I told him, I said, do not, whatever you do, I don't care how long it takes or what it costs, do not damage the roots on these pecan trees, because guys, the oak trees and the privy and all that kind of stuff was standing so thick around these trees. Probably where you're standing, it was out, see there, even the wisteria? Oh, the wisteria was in all of this in here. There's all, look at that, it was even up in all these pecan trees, and the, yeah. and the vines are still up there, I just got them cut off. So this was grown out this much around the, yes. like a perimeter around yes. the, each tree. Every tree. And I told him, I said, look, as a matter of fact, you see some of the trees are still left in them. We cut a lot of them up for firewood over there. That's a minimum of what That's was That's a very minimal amount of them that's left. Uh, Mark, uh, Red Duchess Farms came down and helped us cut some of them. Chris helped me cut some of them up. While the dozer had come through here and piled all this stuff up. And guys, once we got it all cleaned up, a lot of the pecan trees had died because there's technically there's one behind that giant oak right yonder, right there. 
there's a pecan tree behind that right there. Road, and I can't do anything because the oak is rode up in it. The one that was out in the middle out here, it had died. And there's several. I didn't realize that there's still several in those woods through yonder. We didn't push around because I didn't know they were in there. And then down through those pine trees, that's where I saw them originally. Yep. There's little pecan trees. If you, if, I don't know if I zoom up if you can even tell it. You can see them in there. You see, see those pecan trees? That's why out. I called it Pecan Grove. There were pine trees everywhere, but there's little bits of pecans all in there. That's the first trees I saw on this property. Not knowing... This now, was here. Let me just tell you a little story. Now that I have had the pecan orchard cleaned out, and I, uh, I, I just, I, I remember the gentleman, this line over here to the woods over yonder. Now that I know there's pecan trees in there, I got to get that pushed out. He planted English peas all down that side right down in yonder. He had English peas planted there when I was here. He had sweet corn planted all up and down through the middle right in here. Now, he didn't have anything planted over here. That was just mowed. But it's funny how those things come back to you. After you been 30 years ago, I, I try to remember what I saw when I was here uh, visiting with the gentleman. And now, of course, the trees then were only like this big around. They weren't very big. There was, it was a small pecan orchard. And I've talked to his son since then. And his son told me, he said, yeah, he said, Papa got me out there on the coldest days of the year, like the frozen to death, digging all them holes for them trees. But now they've grown up and, you know, they're, they're producing pecans. I enjoyed running into this gentleman. It was kind of a crazy way we met. Uh, I was surveying land and he was in an old dairy barn down the road down here deer hunting. And I was in the middle of the road, sitting on the edge of the road, actually looking at a land map, and I looked up at that dairy barn up the hill, and I saw a gun barrel sticking out the window of it. And I was like, uh, maybe I'm not where I think I am, you know? So I, then I said, ah, it's probably not a gun barrel. Well, I looked back, and it's gone. I said, okay, that was a gun barrel. So a few minutes later, an elderly gentleman in a pair of overalls comes out, toting a gun, walking down the hill, and I said, oh, boy, here we go. I said, you know, you know how people are. It's just company land everywhere, you know? And, I was like, man, I said, I'm probably fixing to get in an argument, I guess. And I said, I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to go about my business. But he crawled over the fence, and he came over there. He said, can I help you with something? And I said, well, I'm running some landlines in here. You know, I was just kind of looking at the property. And uh, and he goes, well, I know every square inch of it. He said, if you want me to, we'll get in the truck. I'll ride you around and show you all the property lines. And I said, good deal. So me and him struck up a really good relationship. And I came back. I asked him, I said, if you need any help, I'm, you know, I'll be more happy to drive back. And, well, I said, you know, I might come back and visit with you. Well, I did come back one day, and I visited with him. And he was in his pecan orchard in the back of a pickup truck with a ladder. And he was sawing the top side of these trees and cutting some of the lower limbs off of them because he wanted to make the trees grow out like this instead of having a central leader in them. And I was like, whoa, I said, you're, you're going to hurt yourself. Whoa, 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 sir. I said, don't, don't don't, get up there on that ladder at your age cutting them limbs. I said, I'm a young man. I was in my 20s. You know, I said, let me help you with that. And he said, well, you know what? He said, if you want to cut some of these limbs off, I'm going to run down to the store and get us a, a sofa. And I said, sounds good to me. Well, he had a 12-foot fiberglass ladder, and he had a little 6-foot one. Well, I cut all of them out of the back of his truck. So I stood the 12-foot ladder up, and I don't remember which one it was because the orchard looks different now than it did then, but it was one of those on that lower part down yonder. I got up on the higher part of that 12-foot ladder, and I was cutting a limb off that he told me to cut off. And when that limb this big around, his long limb sticking out there, when it broke and fell, it hit the ground, and it bounced back, and it hit the legs, the small part of the legs on my ladder, and it broke them. And the ladder fell forward, but I had a chainsaw in my hand. I threw the chainsaw, and as I was falling down like this, when I got down like this right here, my hand hit the ground, and that limb came up and hit me right in the mouth and broke my neck. And I just rolled over on the ground, and I just laid there. I said, well, I can still feel all my extremities. 
but my teeth was all knocked through my bottom lip, and the leaders were hung in between my teeth. So I, I kind of rolled around, I got up, and I just, I didn't move, I just kind of walked like a little tin soldier, just real stiff, back to the house that was up here, and his wife was here. Like just scared her to death when she came to the door. I told her, I said, ma'am, I said, it's okay. He'll be back in a few minutes. I said, I just need a wash rag to take care of this blood on my face. And he brought me a wash rag and I cleaned up and I tried to get my lip back over my teeth. The leaders were hung between my bottom teeth. When he come back up, I told him, I said, look, we got to go to a hospital. And, and the nearest hospital was 40 minutes away. He said, well, I'll take you. And long story short, I broke my neck. Uh, they took my teeth. They fixed my lips, put it back, sewed it back. And I spent the next six, eight weeks of my life in a neck brace. And, you know, the things that I never thought that I would end up buying this property that happened way back yonder, you know. He felt really bad about it. And I told him, I said, no, 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 I'm the one who offered to, uh, I'm the one who offered to help you. I said, it's, it's nothing to do with you. I'm not going to sue you or nothing like that. I said, uh, I just hate that, that it happened. I hate I broke you broke your ladder. I said, but see, this is what I was telling you. If this had happened to you, it probably would have killed you. Because I was very physically fit at that time. And and I just, I told him, I said, look, don't worry about it. And he drove me to the house. My wife came back and got my vehicle and everything. Uh, but that's just a story about this pecan orchard right here. Now let's move forward, and I want to show you some more, uh, some more pecan trees on the property, just to kind of give you an idea about just how many is actually here. Well, guys, uh, this is the entrance into one one part of the property here, and it was so overgrown when we bought it. I just wanted to have a fit when I started opening it up, and I told her I says, "I promise you, when I get through, it will be a nice looking entrance into the property." I had no clue what was in, what was in here. I found so many treasures in this entrance right here. Uh, I, I, as I began to push out the clear for these fence rows, I found this is a concrete. I left it right here. Um, big oaks. Big oak right here. Look at the pecan rose right up in the oak right here. Um, another pecan right here. And as I come down through here, I'm big trying, oaks over here. Yeah, these are some massive ancient. Big trees up in here. I actually found, as I began to push and clear this, especially for this fence, because the cornfield's on the right on the other side of it. I got right here, as I was pushing, another pecan tree. You see, it had with, uh, what is this, Smilax? Smilax. The this Smilax, whole. Look, guys, the Smilax in here was so bad that. I mean, you can see, I, I moved to the other side over here and started piling stuff up over here because I, I had to have somewhere to put it. And there's nothing but Smilax in there. I don't know. This if is see what, you see down through here? This is what this looked like. The whole thing. The whole thing. Both sides like, of the road. Both sides look just like this. A pecan tree right here. A pecan tree right there. Another one behind it. And look up here, guys. I don't know if we can see it. Can you get where you can see? There is a giant mulberry tree right there. I got to see this, the leaves. I got to take the winter huckleberry out from beside it right there. But I found a big mulberry right there. And I don't know what this is. If somebody knows, if they can tell me. It's all in here since we cleared it. It's making a nice cover on the ground, and, and I'm going to leave it. It loves the shade. It loves shade, and it's beautiful. We just keep it cut. Here is the size pecan right here. That some squirrels done been nibbling. Some squirrels done been nibbling uh, on right there, but um, that's, you see there's pecan tree right here. Another one. Right beside it. A real big one. And these trees, uh, these trees are engulfing this whole place. I had no idea they were even here. They were so overgrown like this right here is. You don't have a clue. I had no clue. All it was was vines up in these trees. And as I began to clear out from under them, this one's about to have a fit. But she, 
You thought I was ruining everything, but but look, look at the cedar. Look at this old ancient cedar that's in here. And the top's broken out. Yep. And somebody tried to cut it. Katrina broke the top out of it, and the owner told me he tried to come in here and cut it down, and he saw me. What would have been cut down. And I'm so thankful it's not because it's a giant cedar. Yeah, that thing is. And then awesome. all these trees. And then, guys, this is a pecan. Right here. Another pecan. Now we've got the old cursed sweet gum here. That thing's about 80 feet tall sticking up through yonder. But I don't want to cut I'm it. But I'm not going to take it down. Sweet gum it. has its purposes. It, it'll eventually die. It'll die. But here we go. Look at this. Another big old giant pecan tree. Another one behind it right back there as I was clearing out a found. Big pecan tree right here. Now this one is dying. This one is beginning to uh to die on me. Matter of fact, I think it would have done died and fell down if it hadn't been for the giant mulberry right there. No, the mulberry holding it up. See all this mulberry up in here? This mulberry's holding that tree up right there. Yeah. One day it will. <coughs> One day it'll, it'll give it up. There's another pecan right here. I saw it when I was pushing here today. That one. We come on down. I tried. Look, the holly. Yeah, I, I tried to chop the bark all the way around this tongue nut tree that rode up into my holly here. I didn't want to cut, I didn't want to just cut it down. I wanted it to die fall down piece by piece so it wouldn't damage the holly. Look but at the holly berries. It's, uh, it ain't dying. It's but then here's another pecan out there beside it. And this holly is loaded and it's hanging out. I mean, the sun, but beautiful. I don't like getting rid of my holly trees because there's not many native hollies. And then I come right here, there's another big pecan tree. And then from here on down, we really don't have any pecans on the rest of the entrance coming into the property here. This is mainly just big giant oaks all down through here and cherry trees. Uh, a lot lots of, under, of junk. Lots of just junk. Uh, I did have to clear a good bit out over here because of the Gosh, those cicadas are horrible. Uh, <laughs> this was I, all yopons. Yeah, a this lot was of all yopons and winter huckleberries and smilax, smilax and tongue nuts and oak trees. And, but I did get the bark chopped around this tongue nut right here. It did die. Uh, I was thankful for that. But I got to get it where I can run an electric fence down through here because we're going to plant the cornfield in greens. So that uh, we can keep the deer out of here, hopefully. That was my plan. So we can double fence it. And I'll, uh, look at all the tongue nuts yep. coming up. All that light green in there is tongue, tongue nuts. nuts. When you put the light in here, they just about to come up. All right, we're going to make a trip around. We're going to go to another part of the property and look at some more pecan trees and see if they even have any pecans on because I haven't even looked These at on them. the road do. Oh, these on the road are loaded. I've been eradicating the spoils out of them because they seem like they want them. Guys, I found one of the cons that the squirrels had knocked out of the tree. I didn't know what size was on the tree, but uh, this is the size. That's a, a, size. that's a pretty good size pecan right there. I wonder I don't know if I can break it. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, you did. Can we see what's the inside? I want to see how far along they are. Goodness gracious. The cicadas are crazy. Okay. I may have mashed it too hard that time. But you should be able to see the inside. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's good. It's a good pecan. Look at that. It's completely filled out. Well, wouldn't you think our squirrels know to eat good pecans? Look at that. It is completely full. It's like they're... You it, know what I've noticed? It just needs to cure. It just needs to, it just needs to finish filling, you know, curing out. It's a full pecan. Yeah. There are no disease on these they're all bright green. You know, you see a lot of pecans that's got that spotted, moldy looking stuff all around them. These don't have that. These are just perfectly green pecans. So, for now. These are native pecans. Now, these are not grafted or anything like that. These are all native. So, sometimes the native varieties have uh, characteristics about them 
that makes them resistant to lots of fungal problems that the grafted ones go through. Until our government decides to drop something to test. Yes, and that's, that's horrible. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. If you go back and watch the videos, this right here, you couldn't even get in here. I mean, this, we have videos showing the trachos clearing all this out. Uh, tongue nuts, you couldn't reach around. Tongue nuts, I mean, they were huge. Uh, these trees, since we cleaned out around them, I left a few oaks in there with them. Uh, I, I, just, I just love trees. Now, these trees, a lot of yeah. what you see is pecans. These right here, I don't know. You can actually see them right here on the camera. These are literally loaded with pecans. And the thing about it is, it's just hanging out over my barn, which means I've got to cut the limb off. But I'm going to wait until all the leaves fall off of it and all the pecans have failed. It's hard to see that there's any on it, but they are. Well, you're looking at it from the other direction, you feel perfect. Really. I don't know if the sun would let me go. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm letting it limb out right here at the bottom. I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut it off up about 10, 12 feet high right there. We're going to take a rope and pull it to the side where it won't fall on the barn this winter and get it out of there and then let this bush out at the bottom right here. And the main yeah. part stays. The main part stays. I've already cut one off because it was leaning, when I built the barn, the back of it, it was leaning almost on the barn. So I cut it off. I probably should have cut the other one off at the time. But you know me, I can't, it's hard for me to cut a pecan tree. But all uh, these are pecans with pecans. a smattering of oaks. There's, a, there's maybe six or seven oaks out in there, but that's all pecans out in there. And my heart was just melted because the guy who was taking them out I had 26 trees with ribbons around them, and he took up 26 of my pecan trees. And I don't know if I'll ever get over that. You know, they were big, nice trees. All in know, this area all here. All out in this area out in here. But he took now, down the wrong trees. Yeah. Uh, just a mis misunderstanding about the ribbons, I guess. But uh, let's go look at these pe pecan trees out here where I haven't been in a pretty good while. And let's see if they even have any pecans on them. Okay, now this is one of the smaller trees we cleared out around right here, and let's look and see. It's not a very big tree, but uh, yeah, there's pecans all up in there. Uh, you can see them right there. I don't know if we can. We move one. Can you uh, open that up? Where find we can find them? Where are they? I'm gonna put my finger. If I can find my finger on the tree right here. Come over to right in here. There's pecans all right in there. I see them. There they are. Yeah. They're, they're all in the limbs. So we know there's some in this now, tree. These are little bitty ones. Now that's the thing about this tree. I'll make you know this tree's got the little tiny ones on it. So, now this is where we had the sweet potatoes in a dog pen last year right here in this area. Right here. Okay, it was right in this area. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the tree beside it which is a lot bigger tree but I don't know if I even see any pecans on here. Uh, this one. <laughs> So you got to start watching for squirrels. That one has them on it. This one. Not sure. I don't see any. Yes, they're out here. They're on the over here on this side. Okay. Now, so all these three right here have the pond. Now in this area, was this where some of them got took up? Here. I don't see anything on this tree right here. Boy, that sun. It is bright. I don't see anything on this tree. There's actually, on the other side of the fence right here, there's two more clumps of trees. The cows have got them pretty cleaned out around. And down here, you've got one, I don't see any pecans on two there. more, three more in this area. And then behind it in the field, behind it is trees, pecans. Here's another pecan right here. Yep, another one here going out on the field. This one doesn't appear to have 
the way there's pecan trees. Basically, once you get right down in yonder, that all those little trees you see through there. That's pecan all pecans trees. down in yonder. All of them. Yeah, as I cleared this, I tried to pick and choose. You know, I, I still got to come back and get some of my pine this. trees because I wouldn't let him cut these pine trees down. Yeah, I wanted to extend the cornfield down and she said no. So. No, he took out quite a few pine trees right here just to extend it this far. There was a bunch of pine trees that come yeah, out of here, like six or eight. There. I would have went on. To me, I would have went on down to the next fence down yonder, but she said no. I said no, no, no. Leave this alone. So uh -huh. this makes a good area. The cows love it. Yeah, I'm going to have to come in here and take the pretty out front of these oaks right here so that... Uh, Actually, there's a pecan tree in that. I bet that tree has pecans on it. It, it is, yeah, there is one. Mm -hmm. I've got to come in that tree. Yeah. So, this is what happens. We ride around and we notice, we, you automatically see the underbrush. Yeah. And you don't pay any attention. But then when you start looking up, you see the limbs, especially this time of the year, yep. hanging out over everything else. You might not notice them at other times of the year, but. I really would like to know that that I didn't know that tree was in there. I thought, I seen that oak. And that's the problem. There's a lot of oak trees, and they look so much alike until... Yeah, until you get to this time of the year. It when, really... when it's very obvious what, what tree's what. I probably will have to cut that oak. Um, and at some point in the future. Yeah, as that pecan gets a little bit bigger, I'm going to take all the underbrush I can out from around it. And then one winter when we need some firewood, I'm going to come up here and we're going to cut the oak. Uh, the rest of everything you see through yonder, except one tree right over yonder, is all pecan trees. Well, guys, we're down at our food plot down here. This is what it took me weeks to find. I remember the, the old food plot in here when I was running the land lines in here. I remember this because the land lines right back there at the back. The old gentleman had a old pickup truck sitting in the woods back here that he hunted out of. And this was all just a big, giant food plot. It actually had a fence around it at that time. But since I cleared it up, we have videos of me clearing it. Uh, you can see how bad it really was. It's like that right there. Yeah, it looked just like this right here. Just like that. And I walked through it and tied ribbons on these trees. These are pecan trees off in the bottom of a swamp down in here. So, at some point in the future, this food plot will have a pecan orchard in the middle of it. So... Uh, thus, pecan grove, and, and guys, look, I don't even know how many pecan trees is on the rest of this 40 acres around here. All have, through the woods. I have no clue because I haven't taken time to go and with ribbons and hunt them. I've been so busy with building infrastructure and everything that I just, I just haven't had time. But this is a lot of trees here. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, pecan, 12 pecan trees just right here in this little spot right here. And the thing about it is, is they were planted by God and creation, and they're spaced out fairly decently. I am fixing to take all this underbrush in here. The food plot actually went further on over, but when I was pushing, my tractor would only move so much stuff. I'm going to come in and see now that it's rotted, if I can't take it and move it on into the woods out there further to enlarge the food plot. Because there's actually a section of the food plot back there that you can't see from the shoot house because of the trash pile it turns and goes down in behind it back yonder. Well, guys, you see this right here? On one of our walks around through the woods, this one and I found an old fence row down through here. We began to walk down that old fence row, and I came upon this old giant pecan tree in here. Now, there was another one further down right yonder that's been blowed over, and the old stump still there. But there's a giant oak and a giant pecan here, and just here about a month ago, I just had to make a decision because you see all these little oaks in here? I took out over 100 hundred oak trees standing all up underneath all this in here because they were acorns that had fallen from that big oak right down and had fallen down in here and planted by squirrels. The oak trees were so thick you had to move around like this to get between them and it was beautiful to look at 
But I knew if I left them, because they were growing all up in this pecan tree here, I knew if I left them, the pecan tree would never do anything. So I had to make the executive decision to come in here and take them all out. And I left the oak trees just on the perimeters of the pecan limb to grow up. And there may still be a couple of them that I even take out. But now, I have, I have been finding the pecan or the squirrel are, are taking them out. You see here? The squirrels, they come up here and they nibble a little hole in the ends of them right there. And then they go to the next one. Just, they're just, worse. Just running them. They're running them. They're just worse than rats, you know? There's another and, one. And I mean, I'm another one. Here. They're all over this. Look, right here. Look, they just, they cut the tops off of them. They nibble into them like this. And just let them go. Just drop them. Nibble into them. Just drop them. Just drop them off the tree. I mean, irritates me to no end. I have been coming out here two and three times a day shooting squirrels out of these trees. Just so hopefully I can have some pecans off of them. Look right here where they've been eating. I mean, you, you can see the, the hulls here where they, they sit up here and they hull them all out. Some of them they do and some of them they don't. And then, well, the pecan's in a cluster. And as they try to get one of them off and start cutting on it, the other ones fall. And you end up with... And they come back and get them off the grounds. Oh, it's so irritating. They're all out in the woods out here. They're everywhere. Well, I see them. They're all over the ground. And that's that's a loss for cons for us to be able to have. You know, and, and it, it just, you know, it, you know what it does to me. I like squirrels. I like to eat squirrels. But when you start messing with my food source, you got to go. Well, guys, up here by the pump house and where we're putting our raised beds and, you know, next to our prepper shack out here, there is, uh, there's pecan trees that when I was clearing the property to put all this in here, I left them in here. We have several out by my shop out here. There's a nice grove of pecan trees out there. I left a lot out there, and they all have pecans on them. That's the beauty of it. I mean, every one of them. Now, they don't have lots of pecans, maybe five to ten pounds per tree but that's that's pecans and it lets us know what tree makes what size pecans so we can be more selective in the future now we have other places on the other side over here that we actually have a few more pecans all right this is the last place guys as i cleared this property in here uh for pasture and blueberry bushes and orchards and stuff like that i left all the pecan trees and you can see them they're scattered around all out in here these are all pecan, and they all have pecans on this year now you even go further out in that field out yonder i haven't been way out yonder see that tree way out there behind that tree if you look over to the left right up here those are pecan tree tops in them woods out in yonder are pecan trees it's like three feet in diameter they, trees. they are some of the original pecan trees that was on this property, I don't know, way back 100 years ago, I guess. But the, the, the woods has encroached upon them so much that, you know, I can't get in there and clear them out now because it would just destroy too much. I just leave them for the wildlife out there. But, guys, I hope that today you've enjoyed understanding a little bit about why this Wanda named it Pecan Grove. Uh, and how that the Lord works, because it's always been my dream since a young man to own a pecan orchard. And I didn't have to plant this one. Man didn't have to plant this one. God planted this one with animals. And they're all native pecans. I think I only have the one orchard up there that has the grafted in, and the sad part is I don't know what kind they are. You know, that's one thing I don't know. But I'm excited that this year, if the Lord's willing and my health holds up, and we don't get no bad weather, that this year we will be able to harvest some of our first pecans off of the property, and we will know what size pecans, whether they're thick, tall, thin shell, the taste 
you know, quality, quantity, all this kind of stuff. Will, this year, I hope we'll be able to figure out so that next year we'll be able to do a better decision, make better decisions about how to manage them and take care of them. So, thank you guys.